So hi, everyone. Thank you for joining today. Um, this is the Participation Reports webinar. Um, my name is Anna Tolwinska, and I'm a Member Experience Manager here at Crossref. Uh, I work as part of the Member and Community Outreach Team, and it's my pleasure to talk to you a bit about Participation Reports. Today, I will show you how you can easily track what metadata you're registering with Crossref, why you should be checking the report regularly, how to interpret them, and how to improve your metadata coverage levels. This will be a first of regularly scheduled webinars, hoping to run them monthly. Uh, my colleague Shane Smolian from our support team is here as well on the webinar and will help me with any questions while I'm presenting. Um, you can submit them through the chat window uh, if you have any questions, and then we'll open it up after I stop the recording for um, more questions. If anyone has any questions, they can raise their hand and I will do our best to um, uh, enable you to um, use your audio to ask the question. So before we jump in, I'm going to share a quick poll with you. Hopefully you should see, um, just please bear with me. Um, Hopefully you should see a box with a couple of questions. If you could um, answer the question, uh, that would be fantastic. Uh, so the question is, all the metadata I collect is automatically sent to Crossref. And I will share the results in a little while uh, once um, everyone had a chance to answer the question. Okay, it looks um, as if pretty much everyone has voted. Uh, so I'm going to end the poll and share the results. And I want you to keep the results um, uh, and this question in mind for a while. We'll get back to it uh, later on um, in the presentation. Okay. So I'll go ahead now and get started by telling you a bit more about the reports. So what are the reports? Um, the reports provide a clear picture for anyone to see what metadata Crossref has. They are a place where you can check what metadata you're registering with Crossref. They are open and free to use by anyone. They allow our members to track what metadata they're registering with us, which is not always easy to do and they allow for the opportunity to evaluate and educate and for members to see how they measure up and see where the gaps are so that they can be improved. So they are now about a year and a half old. We launched them in the summer of 2018. They are in beta, so please keep that in mind when using them. Um, so they're not, um, we're hoping to improve them um, and we, we like to call it phase one at this point. Um, so. Uh, any feedback that you have is very valuable and uh, please uh, share it with us if you do have some feedback. So why? Um, so you may be wondering um, why we developed these reports. Um, well, they came about mainly because we have been hearing from our members at conferences and in meetings on calls that they're not always sure what metadata they're registering with us. We always assume that our members know exactly what they're sending us. So we decided to make it easier um, for both our members and ourselves to see what metadata was being registered. This data has been available for quite some time um, via our REST API, but not everyone knows how to query our APIs and it's not very user friendly. They're more geared at machines rather than humans. So it's not um, an easy to use interface. So that's why we um, developed the participation reports because they're much easier to, um, to read. Um, you can see what's missing um, as well. So another reason um, was that it made it easier for our, um, 
our members to see what's missing and to fill in the gaps and update their metadata. Um, how can we expect you know, our members to fix something if they're not sure that something is actually missing from our metadata? And lastly, the reports allow you to track your progress and see if what they have, what you have updated is actually being reflected in Crossref. So sometimes you might want to add uh, or update your metadata and you're not sure if, if it actually is being added. So that's a good place to go and check. Um, especially if you use a vendor or a third party. Um, so if someone else does the depositing for you, um, it's really great to, to be able to just uh, go to the, your participation report and see if your vendor or your service provider is actually doing what they're supposed to be doing on your behalf. So it's important to register as much metadata as you can because um, that metadata makes your content more useful and more discoverable. And also this brings us back to our poll at the beginning of the webinar um, where it's you're not really sure sometimes you're not sure what you're sending us and this is a great tool to actually uh, be able to see um, what you're sending us quite easily so let's now take a look at how um, that happens um, so um, oops excuse me there we go so where does the metadata in crossref end up um, so because Crossref's metadata is standardized and machine readable, it is very useful to many organizations that make your content more discoverable. And here are a few examples. So um, organizations that provide services um, such as search and discovery, uh, matching and linking citations, collecting uh, related research objects, verifying and validating records. So um, organizations such as libraries, library discovery services, um, and metrics and analytics companies, uh, manuscript tracking systems, all of these different types of services depend on Crossref's metadata and uh, Crossref's metadata makes, makes it easier for these organizations and these types of services to run and in turn help your readers to you know, discover your content. So when registering metadata in Crossref, it's also very important to keep in mind that the metadata is correct, that there are no errors, no typos, that it's complete, that all of the fields that you can you know, manage to register with us are registered. So not just the first author, but all of them, uh, publication dates, and anything that's not required. So any extras, uh, for example, ORCIDs or funding information or license information, if you have it. Um, and to make sure that it's up to date. So make sure that it's all up to date. Talk to um, your vendors or service providers if they are the ones registering it for you to make sure that that's um, being done for you. And once you update your metadata, you can expect to see it reflected in the participation report in about um, 24 hours or so. Okay, so uh, let's see how the uh, participation report actually works. So when you navigate to the main page of the participation report, um, you will see a search box. So let's go there. And you can type in um, your name or a name of the organization that you'd like to to see. So today I'm going to be looking at um, the American Geophysical Union. So when I click on um, uh, their name um, in the search box, it takes me to this main page. However, if I made a mistake and didn't look up the correct member, you can go back to find a member uh, and try that again. Um, but today we'll, we'll be looking at this particular member. I use the American Geophysical Union um, because they have, they're a good example of a member that's depositing um, richer uh, metadata. So um, as I mentioned, you land on this main page that displays your report and all of the 10 key elements that we think are important in making your content more useful and more discoverable. At the top, you will see your organization name, of course, right here. 
Uh, and then you will also see the total number of content items. So anything that you've registered so far. Um, however, that number is dependent on the date selection. So right now we're looking at current content, but if we wanted to see all of the DOIs that the American Geophysical Union registered with us, we would have to click on all time. And uh, the number um, of all of the total of the DOIs that uh, AGU has registered with us is 223,000. Um, but let's look at current content for um, this sake of this presentation or the beginning. Um, so current content is anything that has been registered in the year that we're currently in, so 2020, and two previous years, so 2019 and 2018. So for, over that span of the two years and a bit, um, we consider that current content. And we're looking at journal articles, which is the other dropdown that would allow you to see what content types a publisher is registering. So if you're registering not just journal articles, but books, book chapters, conference proceedings, this uh, left hand of the uh, participation report would allow you to switch between them. And just to um, uh, show you an example of that with another um, publisher, Springer, because they do have additional content types, um, we can select different content types on this uh, drop down right here. But let's go back to our um, example of um, American Geophysical Union. Um, so um, you can also um, see what percentage of the key elements that we think are important, the publisher or yourselves are registering um, as part of your metadata deposit. So the first really important um, key element that we think uh, everyone should be registering is uh, references, of course. And the percentage is the total percentage of the DOIs that have been registered with references as part of the metadata deposit. And at any point, if you're um, not sure what you're looking at exactly, there's a little eye that you can hover over it. Um, and it will bring up a pop-up box that will tell you what this means and what the percentage means. So percentage of content items or DOIs that include reference lists in their metadata. So 85% of the 16,000 DOIs that were registered in um, the last two years have references deposited. Um, and that goes for all of the different elements um, that we'll be talking about here. The next one is open references. And open references just um, refers to whether the references here are open across all of our APIs and services or whether they are not. Um, uh, so all of the data, metadata and Crossref is, um, share, is shared with across all of our different services and APIs except for references. Publishers have a choice whether to open the references or limit them. Um, and um, uh, we of course encourage everyone to um, share their references. It's really important. Um, references are a big part of the story of your content, um, where it sits in the scholarly map, and also they enable you to use our cited by service, which means that you can query for publications that cite your work. So if you're participating in cited by references are really important, and making them open just means that um, anyone would be able to use them and see them. Um, and if they're not uh, open, this percentage would be zero. So you can kind of um, take a look at your uh, participation reports. Uh, maybe I'll share um, the link in our chat window for everyone to later navigate to it um, and see whether your uh, references are open or not. Um, next, we have ORCIDs. And ORCIDs are um, ORCID identifiers help uh, authors disambiguate their names. Um, so um, these, persistence identif these persistent identifiers enable users to precisely identify a researcher's work. 
um, even if the researcher has a similar name to another researcher. Uh, and they're very important uh, because sometimes um, governments and funding agencies um, are looking to account for their research investments. So this just makes it easier for authors um, and research uh, organizations to track that. Um, another benefit of um, um, getting an ORCID identifier if you're an author is that Crossref will automatically update your ORCID profile page with any publication that you were an author on that has a DOI. Of course, that um, requires the author's permission for us to do that, but that is a benefit of, of doing that. So if your authors uh, don't have ORCIDs, please encourage them to uh, get one and then register them as part of the metadata. And once again, 84% of the 16,000 um, articles deposited with Crossref have at least one ORCID identifier. So this is a really good example of a publisher that is registering richer metadata. Um, next up, we have funder register registry IDs. Um, and funder registry IDs are um, just show the percentage of registered content that contains the name and funder registry ID of at least one organization that funded the research. Um, and the same um, kind of goes hand in hand with award numbers. You can register funding award or grant numbers as part of the metadata if you have them. And in this case, AGU has 70% of the 16,000 articles have um, at least a funder name included in, um, in the metadata. And it's really important because uh, funding acknowledgements give vital context for users and consumers of your content. Um, and um, it just uh, basically uh, helps um, uh, extracting the acknowledgements um, from your content can be really hard for uh, various funders. So um, Crossref just makes that much easier to do. Next up, we have Crossmark. If you are participating in Crossmark, and Crossmark is a service that um, Crossref provides to our members, which allows you to um, indicate on your article pages whether the content has changed or been updated or even retracted since publication. And you can include that in the metadata as well. And if you are participating in this service, which is now actually free uh, to deposit Crossmark metadata, in the past it was um, there was a cost involved, but we have dropped the fees for Crossmark. So it's now free to participate in Crossmark. Um, and if you are participating and registering um, the policy page, which is a requirement for Crossmark, this um, participation report would indicate um, a percentage of how uh, many DOIs include have the Crossmark policy page included in the metadata. Uh, next up, we have text mining URLs. So we allow our members to register various types of URLs that um, help researchers, help um, pu other publishers, help um, uh, research funding um, organizations. But the text mining URLs actually help uh, researchers and publishers. So if you do get a lot of requests for your content to be text and data mined from researchers or librarians, um, you can include the text mining, the full text URL in the metadata, um, of course, with appropriate permissions on your end um, for access. And researchers will be able to automatically text and data mine your content, given that you, know, you have permissions set up. Um, you can include the license that pertains to the text mining as well in Crossref's metadata. And license URLs can also include open access copyright licenses. So um, that's very useful for uh, open access publishers as well to indicate what, um, you know, what content or whether all of their content is open access or some of the content for subscription based publishers. Um, so that's a very useful um, uh, key element that a lot of publishers and researchers look for in, in the metadata and a lot of the different services that I showed you before rely on this information as well. Um, next up, we have similarity check URLs. 
similarity check URLs are um, URLs that you can register if you're participating in the service uh, to enable the organization turn it in to crawl your full text content for the purposes of uh, similarity check um, to include it so that other publishers can check against a, a large database of full text content to make sure that there are no similarities between um, their uh, manuscripts and uh, what is already uh, been um, added to the, the, the large uh, Turnitin database. And last but not least, um, we also have uh, enable you to include abstracts and abstracts in the metadata give further insight into your work. So it's it just gives your readers um, a more of a, you know, uh, a better way to to know what they're looking for and what they're um, potentially uh, hoping to use um, in their research. And um, of course, um, various members will have different levels of these key elements registered. So of course, um, this is a really great example, but um, you will, you know, even if you navigate to backfile, which is older content, and you can change the date uh, range here, um, you can see that not all of the elements um, have as high of a percentage as the ones in current content, because it's much harder to kind of go back and extract metadata from older content, older PDFs, but we do encourage you to, to register as much as you possibly can. You can um, start kind of fresh, you know, start tomorrow um, with adding more metadata, but if you ever have time and a budget and um, uh, and can update your older content, we, you know, we would um, encourage you to do so as well. Okay, um, another thing I may have missed in the beginning is that you can look up uh, individual journals. So if there's a specific journal that um, maybe there's an editor uh, of a particular journal and they'd like to see what, um, how the metadata is being tracked and how um, it's growing over time, they can navigate to a specific journal and just look at that one journal um, title. Um, and of course, some journals, um, metadata coverage varies from journal to journal. Um, you can kind of see it here. Um, some of the journals have very good coverage, others um, not so, um, not as good. Um, uh, but this uh, AGU is a really good example of um, a very good um, uh, metadata rich uh, publisher in Crossroad. Okay, let's see now. I think we are done with the we are done with the demo and I just have I had a couple of screenshots just in case my live my live demo did not work out um, um, but it did so uh, I don't have to rely on the screenshots I do have another poll um, and I'm going to launch it right now. So um, it's a little activity that I um, I have for everyone. Um, so what I'd like you to do now is take navigate to the participation report um, on your computers if you have access to that uh, and identify um, an area where you are doing well. So um, please take a moment to navigate um, to your participation report, um, take a look, and then I'm going to launch uh, another poll. I will give it a minute uh, or so. So hopefully you can, um, everyone can see um, the poll. And I'll 
we'll give it a few more minutes for everyone to get a chance to take a look and see how they're doing. Okay, I'm going to um, end the poll now, um, just to give us an idea of where um, most of us have answered at this point. Um, um, and just to give you an idea of what um, uh, areas where people are doing well. So, so I think by far similarity check URLs are the winners, um, but I'm, I'm glad to see references and of course, abstracts, um, all of that is fantastic. Um, and if you can just keep doing what you're doing um, and try, you know, doing a little better on funding um, in the funding area and the licenses as well. Um, that is, if you are able to register funding information, because not everyone um, has that information available to register. So it's sometimes typical not to see, depending on what type of a member uh, it is, not to see uh, various different key elements. Some, some members might not in the humanities have, um, or social sciences have fun, funding information to register. Uh, some things may not make sense for, um, uh, for different uh, types of publishers. Okay. Um, I have another activity for you. Um, and this one will be identify an area where you could send more metadata. So this is where you're not doing as well. Um, please uh, take a look at your participation report and see where you see the zeros. And if you see a zero, you can select that on this poll. And I'll give it a few more minutes. Um, Okay, it looks um, as if most people have uh, voted. I'm going to end the poll and share the results. So from this, we can see that references are the big winner here or non-winner. Um, it seems that uh, many of you are not registering references. So we would encourage you to do so. That would be um, a big you know, win both for you and for um, uh, open science. Um, and also you could um, uh, you could participate in the cited by um, linking if you um, cited by service if you were uh, registering references it's a free service for anyone to use um, and it does help um, with discovery and it also makes it useful for others to see what reference what um, other articles are citing your content. Um, so if I were to say 
the three kind of most important key elements that you could start registering with us. That would be references, ORCIDs if you do have them, licenses um, for indicating open access content. Um, so that those, those three would be really, really important. But if you could start with references, that would be great. Okay, I'm going to um, stop sharing uh, now and stop the recording as well. And we can open it up um, to um, questions. Let me just stop the recording.